I got you guys pulled up. I think you can see that. Um, so not this one from 22 hours ago, but this one here from one day ago. Uh, after, I don't know why it comes twice. Okay. Uh, uh, no, after. Uh, no, that's rental. Apartment. Oh, no. So I think it's, it's not there. Uh, that's strange. Uh, went from Instagram? No, no. It's from Instagram. Oh, my business page. Oh, your business page. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's not there. Well. Oh, you don't have it on your profile. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, That's strange because I, I tagged Lennon and he liked it. So what do I type in? I type in Alejandro Guzman uh, or something else? Yeah, or, or Instagram, whatever is easier. Okay. <sighs> you got to fix your link. Um, for, for Instagram? Yeah, it, it wasn't, um, it, it went to oh. a link that didn't work. Huh. Okay. Good, good to know. Is it one of these? Uh, that, right. To the right, the third one? This, this one? one? Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. let's check it out. Let me get the volume on here. Solar finance is a transaction where the seller act like the bank and lend uh, money to the buyer and the buyer will make uh, payments monthly. I will let you know guys about my seller finance deal in a second. They just got, we just got the paid off. They pay the whole house in less than a year. And it was a great, great deal, great opportunity for these uh, buyers. All right, I'm gonna stop right there for a second, right? You see how you started that video, Alejandro? You started that video with explaining to people what seller financing is, right? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Imagine if you were to start that video like this. I just got a check for $150,000, right? Because how much was your payoff? How, how much was uh, Well, I, I bought it for 40 and I sold it for 65. 65, right? So, 65. Yeah, so what they owed you was probably like, what, like 40, 50,000? 25. Huh? 25. 25,000. Okay. So you can say, I just got a check for $25,000 and I didn't have to do any work at all. And this is how I did it. Now you've got people hooked. You understand? Then you explain some about what seller financing is. All right. I'm going to stop right there. Anyone else want to give Alejandro any suggestions so far? No, keep going. Let's okay. see more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one other suggestion I'm going to give you, I'm going to save to the end, and I'm going to, I want you guys to try to pay as close attention to the video as possible, and then we'll, uh, we'll circle back. Hi, my name is Lenin Paredes, and I am the owner of Hometown Tile in Anderson, New Jersey. Today, we'll be discussing seller financing. Seller financing is when the seller holds a mortgage on the property being sold. From the title standpoint, the process is pretty simple and straightforward. At closing, the seller will receive the sales proceeds less the amount of the mortgage given to the buyer. The buyer will execute a mortgage and a note creating the lien and debt on the property. The title agent will record the mortgage giving the seller a first lien mortgage priority on the property. The mortgage will remain of record until paying full and discharged by the seller. During this time, uh, the new owner will not be able to sell the property until the mortgage is painful and satisfied. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any further questions about sales financing or any title insurance questions, feel free to reach me via email. My email is lenin at hometowntitlenj.com or you can call my office at 908-469-8441. Thank you. All right. 129 Grand Street in Salem, New Jersey. This property I acquired for about 40000 It was a bulk sale of a couple properties. And um, I received multiple multiple offers, but um, I was um, I decided to go with this family. They really wanted it, but they didn't have the whole amount. I sold it for 65000 And they uh, paid me forty dollars and paid me 25000 in payments of 3000 every month. So I did act like a bank, and I gave them the opportunity to actually I uh, have the first house in um, in the U.S., uh, so I'm happy about that. And um, if you want to check out our latest deals, how we do everything, just follow me. 
I will let you know so you can fill in real estate. Let's talk about seller finance. Seller finance. Okay. All right, guys. Um, Alejandro, great job, brother. I mean, it, it, done is better than perfect, and but we're gonna get we're gonna get better and better with every video, exactly like you said. Uh, does anyone want to give Alejandro or Alejandro? Do you want to? Now that you watch the video again, let me give you the first the first crack at it. Now that you've watched your video again, how do you think you? What things you think you can improve on? Well, I always thought that I can put more energy to it, like uh, being like more excited. Okay. Um, that's one thing because I I noticed like most of the influencers always like hyper type, like they talking like hyper like excited and stuff like that. And that's that's kind of engaging, yes. Okay. Um, but you know everybody doesn't do the same, but it's like a pattern. Yeah. What I, that's what I see. Um, yeah. That's that's one thing, and well, like you say, like uh, get a, get working on a hook for the next one. Like, I, like a, I was gonna say that the hook was left out. Yeah. You know. You, you should have started the video with a hook, but it's great. I yeah. love it. Yeah. How about how about adding the script? Adding the the script. Adding the words. Adding like a marquee. Oh, underneath, underneath. Yeah. As you're talking, yeah, that gets people's attention too. Uh, if if you guys don't know um, what Jose is referring to, uh, let me see if I can pull up a video that has like a subtitle. Yeah, like subtitles. Let me just show you. Oh, yeah, those are good. Um, with emojis. While he's looking for that, Alejandro, <clears throat> what I was dying for was, I want to see the house. I want to see the yeah. house. If, if you could have just, you know, uh, five or 10 seconds of your face and then flip the camera so that as you're walking, we're walking and seeing what you're seeing rather than looking at your face. That to me, that would have been a big hook because we can still get your information, but we're looking at the house that you made 25,000 on or whatever. Yeah, a show is better Thank than that. Yep. That's good. That's good info. Uh, what what uh, Jose is referring to is, is something like this, but you don't need to do this on every single video because I don't want you guys to get caught up in paralysis analysis. But if you get the time or you get someone to do uh, stuff for you, this does help engagement uh, in the very beginning because on a lot of platforms, people watch with the with the volume off, believe it or not. So um, what he's referring to is something like this. Just sold for two hundred and fifty. See the little words at the bottom. Auction. According to our site visit, it needed about $50,000 worth of repairs. The house next door is listed for $380,000 and it's 200 square feet smaller. That means if you purchase this property, you would be left with $80,000 worth of equity after renovations. We can refinance this property at an 80% loan to value, which means we can cash out $304,000, which means you can own this property for literally no money out of pocket. And the beauty is that the mortgage will only be roughly about $2,000 and the house is going to be rented for at least $2,500, which leaves you positive $500 per month. Do you want to learn more on how you can get involved with deals just like these? Well, I'm going to leave you my direct office sign so you can send me a text message right here, or you can simply just follow or subscribe to see more future deals just like these. This All right, so do you see how it does help the video, but it's not necessarily what you have to do. Uh, it does give it a little bit more of um, people kind of focus more because you're showing them. So if you're going to record videos in your office or in your house and you want to give it a little more pizzazz, you can do that. But the fact that Alejandro is usually outdoors or he's at Home Depot or he's in the car, you know, it, it's it's already there's a lot of stuff going on already. So, you know, you don't you don't necessarily have to do these all the time. If you get the option to turn on captions on your video, some platforms allow you to do that. Um, turn them on. You, you guys know that you get that option. I hope, hope some of you have already seen that or, or tried it. If you get the option to turn on captions, do it 100 percent of the time. Do it. It automatically can be done. So that the reason why that's good is because people can see the words underneath you and they're following along on the words and it's uh, subconsciously people are engaged more when you see the words as you're speaking them. Get it? Yes. Got it. Good. Uh, anything else you guys want to add? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Like you said. Uh, Go for it. Say it again. So yeah, subconsciously like the words, yeah, but uh, like when you're talking about numbers specifically, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. Yeah. When you talk about numbers specifically, you put the numbers, like you put 20, you know, 2,000, 2,500, 500, that visual right there, that visual to me, it helps so much. Oh yeah. You know? So um, 
you know, to me, I just go back to that. A picture is worth a thousand words. Mm -hmm. And once you have it in writing spe specifically with numbers, that helps. I think that helps a lot, like tremendously. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I, I want you guys to pick up on something on Alejandro's video. It's not so much in his vocabulary as it is in his physiology. Do, can you guys pick up anything on his video that, that he can improve on? Because uh, I think Tony Robbins, or he probably got it from somewhere. But I think he said that like 80% of communication is nonverbal or more, than, or maybe more, maybe 90, who knows? Branding. Um, no, it's more about it's more about him and what he's doing with his body when he's oh. in the video. Well, if uh, if you guys aren't picking up on this, it's because probably um, your you know our, our brain is not picking up the fact that a lot of times when Alejandro is in this video, and I do it myself, and I still have to talk myself um, into not doing it because we fall victim of this. But as time goes by, you'll you'll realize you're doing it. When you're recording on your phone, we tend to look at ourselves on the video, but the camera is not on the screen. The camera is off to the left or to the right, depending on how you're using your camera. So we fall into the we fall into the uh, the the issue of that we're watching ourselves, and then when people are watching us on the cam uh, on on the on the phone or watching us on the computer, we're not making eye contact with them. If you look, and I've done this a million times by mistake. Alejandro is consistently looking at himself in the camera, or he's looking off to the right, to the up or left or right or somewhere else, anywhere but the camera. Watch. Seller finance. Seller finance is a transaction where the seller act like the bank and lend uh, money to the buyer, and the buyer will make uh, payments monthly. I will. You see, even though he does it subtly, this subconsciously again shows me that he's not 100% comfortable because he's not making eye contact with me. And eye contact is super powerful in being able to command your audience and being able to gain trust over a device. Because remember, we're not in person with someone. If Alejandro was in person with someone, he would not be talking to them like this and then you know, looking all over in the different directions because Alejandro knows better than that. But because he's not 100% comfortable still with conveying himself over video, He's trying to look in other places so he can recall because that's what our brain does when we want to recall information. We tend to look around, right? So um, Alejandro is going to now, next time he does a video, he's going to be like, oh, one thing I got to remember, eye contact with the camera, not with my image on the camera and not off into the clouds or off to the right. You guys see that now? Yes. Louis, do you ever use a teleprompter? No. Uh, no, I've, I've never used a teleprompter. The best thing you can do if you're not good at remembering what you want to say is use bullet points on another device, on, on maybe a piece of paper, it doesn't matter, because there's nothing wrong with you saying, uh, okay, my next topic, oh yeah, and the next thing I wanna to talk to you about, and then put the phone away or the piece of paper down and then make contact with the audience again. I'll show you guys in my latest video how I did that. And then I just put it away and I just went off because you don't have to be perfect. No one's looking for perfection. You know, if you don't believe me that no one's looking for perfection, let me just show you, uh, was it this one? Yeah, this last Lewis, video. Lewis? Yeah, go ahead. Lewis, do you repeat the video or you just shoot it one time and that's it? Uh, you, well, the thing is you can do this. If, if you're not really comfortable, there's no excuse in you not recording, right? So what you can okay. do is you can record your video in sections, right? So if you feel like, all right, I got to prep myself for a section one. Okay, section one is about uh, how to break into your market. Okay, breaking into your market, one, two, three. Okay, good. All right, so record section one, blah, 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 whatever. And then when you're done, you can stop and be like, what's section two? Section two is um, building a brand, building a brand. Oh, okay. Okay, so my next section, I wanna talk to you about building your brand. And building your brand is important because people will only recognize it bright colors, you know, whatever you want to talk about. So, and then what you do is when you go back to the editing process, you can just chop them up and put them together. True. But if you, but if you really start getting comfortable, you'll notice that in this video that I recorded on Friday, I think it was, which has already got 18,000 views in just a few days. And this is a video that I, I spent maybe 20 minutes recording and probably uh, an hour editing just because I'm a little bit psycho when it comes to editing. And I didn't really do much editing. I just wanted to make sure a lot of things were in there. <clears throat> I want to show you guys that I didn't care if I had to look at my phone and look at the next thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. 
I'll show you guys real quick what I mean by that. Because you get comfortable, you don't care about perfection after a while because the information is more important than the perfection of what you're saying. Let me show you what I mean. In 2020, I decided that I was completely done with living in New Jersey and I moved down here to Southwest Florida. Now, I know many of you guys already know that, but the reason I'm telling you this is because when I... Okay, watch. Anywhere, guys. Anywhere in the country that's a good market, uh, th these opportunities are also apply to you. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is uh, home prices. Are you see what I did there? I yep. didn't remember what my first topic was. I looked at my phone and I'm like, you know what? I just went off on a tangent. I told you guys this whole bunch of stuff. All right. My first topic, my first topic. Oh, okay. My first topic. All right. What's going to happen to home prices? And then I don't look at my phone again until I get to maybe topic number two. What was it? Yeah, here we go. Check this out. Still because the less inventory, right? So keep that in mind. I'm not going to tell you the answer. I'm going to let you make that uh, decision for yourselves. Now, the second thing I want to talk to you guys about is uh, insurance rates after Hurricane Ian, right? Insurance rates after Hurricane Ian. Now, while I was researching this topic, I learned that. And then again, I don't look at my phone for the next five minutes. And I just talk to you guys about everything that I researched. Because the reason why I'm so comfortable talking to the camera for five minutes about a certain bullet point is because I researched the information before recording the video preparation will, will, will make your video that much better. Uh, some people have to prepare longer than others. Uh, with me, I, you know, obviously I, I don't have to prepare as long because I know the, I, I know the subject, but then when I learn something new, I, I, I kind of dig into that a little bit more. I get excited and I, and I build off of that. And I tell people, look, this is what I just learned. I want you guys to understand this. This, this is why it would affect you. This is why it wouldn't affect you. But what I'm trying to tell you is that it's okay not to use the teleprompter. It's okay to be human as long as the information is good. That's what that beats everything else is the information. If your information is well researched, it doesn't matter if you have to look down at a piece of paper. It doesn't matter if you're standing behind a, a wall that hasn't been framed yet. You okay. understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. 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 All right. I'm glad. Um, now we're gonna we're gonna take a quick look. I know we we uh, we we did Alejandro's video. Uh, and now. Alejandro, I'm going to give you some positive uh, things that I think were good. Uh, so you guys can also see that um, we're not just here beating each other up. We're actually giving each other positive reinforcement as well. Uh, and don't consider it a beat up, Alejandro. This is, you know, people pay, people pay um, marketing and uh, social media consultants big money to tell them uh, what we're telling you in this, in this video. I mean, in this, in this meeting, right? So the one thing I'll tell you that you did really good in this video is you're starting to think differently. You're starting to think put more effort into your video and you're starting to know that collaboration is important because your video will become more engaging if you have a change of scenery or a change of characters. And you did that, you, you threw in a different person into your video and you gave their perspective along with your perspective. Now, what that did was it made you uh, seem that much more credible now because you had an expert on your, on your video. So congratulations to you because you're stepping up your video game, right? Now, the uh, only thing I'll tell you about that is that it would have gone much better if you actually asked him the questions and he responded back because he's uncomfortable because he's not a full-time video guy. He wrote a script and he read off a script you know, to the audience. It would have been better if you asked him some of the things he wanted to convey. You looked at his script and said, you know what? Let's toss your script. I know what things you're trying to, um, I know what, what questions you're trying to answer. Let me answer them for you and give me your one-liners. Give me one-liners and make him snappy like that, you know, because uh, not for nothing, but he, he could have been a little bit more energetic, but it's not his fault because he doesn't do this. You understand, Alejandro? Thank you. Good, good. Yeah, all right. Anything else you guys want to add Do you guys think was good about Alejandro's video? Best thing about the video, Alejandro, is you just did it and you've been doing it. And it, it's, um, to me, that's, that's worth a lot. Sorry, yep, sorry. it's very informative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you, thank you so much for making it. Yeah, it was oh. clear, concise, and to the point. Yes. Yes. Short enough, short enough that people will come back to you because it's. Um, I think that's maybe one thing I need to improve on. Say less. Less is more. I want to oh, say too that I think Alejandro has just a friendly demeanor and approachable and somebody that would be easy to sit and listen to and talk to. I like the fact that it seems like he didn't um, try to overthink it. He just went for it. 
um, even though it wasn't perfect, but he just went for it. And I think that that speaks volumes right there and just continuing with that attitude. And the more videos that he puts out, the better he's going to get. Um, and the more he's going to learn from it, just from just by going uh, and doing it. Um, second, I like the the content as well. Seller financing is something now that um, is probably going to be very relevant. I know I commented on the post when I saw the video, um, especially with interest rates rising and they're going to continue to rise. It's something, it's a, it's another, it's like another tool um, that some people are probably not thinking about, but um, could become useful right now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's great. Great info, guys. Great insights on that. Awesome. All right, Alejandro, we are, you're off the hot seat, brother. Good. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Congratulations, brother. Um, Brent, first of all, I want to congratulate you on your your logo, your your profile here. It's very, very bright and professionally done. Great job to you. I don't know. Even though Brent is not uh, he he's not a um, a web designer, he's not a guy that's skilled in any of this stuff, but he finds the people to help him because he knows his strengths and he knows his weaknesses. One of Brent's best strengths is that Brent probably has decades of speaking experience, right? And that's what he's good at. He's good at breaking down those barriers between people. He can, he can make you feel comfortable. He, he's very well-spoken, but he doesn't know all the technical side of things. So he surrounds himself around people who can help him with that. So there is never an excuse, guys. You can never say, oh, I'm not good at this. I'm not good at that. It's okay. You guys can find ways to, to get better at it. So uh, Brent, is it okay if we watch this uh, reel here that you put out? This is, the, this is the one I saw the other day. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's check this one out. Hey, guys. Welcome to Gulf Premier Sarasota. This is Brent Haggerty with EXP Realty. Every state has a law, right? How about gun laws in Florida? Well, how about marijuana? Is there any recreational drug available in Florida? Can you ride a motorcycle in Florida without a helmet? What about a cell phone? Can you hold it in your hand? Or what's the penalty if you break the law? Can someone come and take your home away from you if you owe them money? Ooh, there's a big one. What's a home contempt <laughs> law? What's a CDD fee? And why, why is it attached to your property tax? And why do you have to pay it once a year? And why do some people not have to pay a CDD. Alligator laws? Are you kidding? Yeah, alligators exist in Florida. I'll give you one hint. It's a felony to kill an alligator out of season. It's a felony to mess with alligator eggs. Check it out. Laws of Florida. Don't mess with Florida. <laughs> I, love it. I like it. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, I, I really that. enjoyed it. <laughs> Okay, good, good, good. Uh, like I told you guys, he's very, very good with um, with speaking. The guy is a gift. You know, maybe not a gift, maybe like a, a skill, because I'm sure he didn't just wake up one day and be like, oh, I'm such a great speaker. <laughs> he's done it many, many times. So uh, give him some criticism first. Let's give him some positive criticism on how he can improve his video. And then we'll give him some accolades later. 10 out of 10 for me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I thought it was great. I just wanted to know the answers to some of those yeah. questions. Like what yes. is a CDD? Yeah. I, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna... I, I see, he left a lot of hooks to make you want more. So yeah. that was design, guys. That's the TikTok short to feed a, a, a YouTube long that is laws of Florida. Don't mess with Florida. So that, that's the feeder. Yeah. So there's a, there's a YouTube link. Check it out and, and just click on that and boom, it bounces them right to the YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, and Ben, that you said that, I think maybe you should have added answers, answers yeah. to these questions in that link. You should have put I, that up there because yeah. I wouldn't have just clicked on it just to click yeah. on it. I would I would agree. Yeah. Exactly. I, I wanted to say that he's not talking about real estate in that video per se, but just the background itself, it's inviting. And a call for somebody to ask, oh, where do you live? That look, it looks so nice in the background. Like, I want to go move there. Um, so uh, not me. The minute he mentioned the alligators, I got so turned off. <laughs> <laughs> I actually started looking at the water. <laughs> yeah. So I walked out of my house with my camera and my gimbal. I stuck that thing and walked across the street to the pond. And that was... That was done in a one take 
and then I sent it to the editor and he he dressed it up. So not a not a big time commitment. And I, I did exactly what you said, Lewis. I had seven bullet points holding it in the same hand as my gimbal. And I, I just, boom, there, it was right there. So I glanced down and saw. Yeah. That's great. I loved it. I think one of the things I think you're going to, you're going to um, take away from this is, and blunt and messy. Um, I see uh, she already mentioned it was the fact that um, you have to, uh, because this was done off the fly, you probably didn't give it much thought what, how it was going to be used, but you have to direct them. It's called a call to action. You have to tell them if you want to know the answers to these and many more real estate related questions, check out the full video explanations in my YouTube page. And then here, when you have this page right here up, what comes up, find out all the answers on my YouTube link. Yeah, you know, whatever, you definitely. Know? Yeah. definitely failure, yeah. But, I'm, but there's nothing wrong with it because I'm sure, like you said, it wasn't planned out. It wasn't scripted. It was something you did off the cuff, which is better than doing nothing. Because you're building awareness now. You're building uh, uh, more content around your face, which is which is great. You can never go wrong. One other thing I'll tell you is that each one of those topics should be a short on its own. Every one of those topics could be a short. So, for instance, um, the CDD, right? Uh, can you explain to us real quick what a CDD is and how um, how it affects homeowners in, in Sarasota? Community Development District is CDD. Back uh, 25 years ago, developers. We're ripping people off by promising there's going to be a tennis court, there's going to be amenity center, there's going to be a huge Olympic-sized pool, and then they would um, they would promise it at the end. They would uh, then build all the homes and skip town and never never put the amenity center and nothing. So um, the bank worked in conjunction with state lenders and they came up with these things called community d development districts, where the developer actually gets financing and then gets to divide it by the number of lots and each person pays into that uh, district, added onto their tax bill once a year uh, until it's paid. And um, that's what a community development district is. Typically when, does the, typically, when does the home buyer find out about the CDD fee? They should find out about it when they're shopping it out. Um, okay. It's part of the realtor's responsibility to talk to them about HOA fees and if there's a CDD and how much. Is it built into the tax record where they can visibly see it themselves? I believe it is, yes. It is. So if like I'm a home buyer and I go and I see 123 Main Street and I see it on Zillow, is Zillow going to tell me there's a CDD fee? Probably you not, know, right? I, I don't dare answer yes or no because I don't know. So I guess I better find out. Yeah, probably not. I'm assuming probably not. So this is the story you need to tell with CDD. Find a couple, make a couple up. It doesn't matter, right? John and John and Melissa Smith, they were looking for a house in Florida and they were pre-qualified for $350,000. But to their dismay, they figured they found out that they would not qualify for this home because of a CDD fee. A CDD fee, if you've never heard about it before, it could be the reason why you're not going to get approved for your mortgage. You're still curious about how to buy a home in Florida and avoid these CDD fees or know about them ahead of time? Well, click on my link. You can see the full explanation, you know, like something like that. Or maybe you can even tell them what a CDD fee is to, to an extent. And you can say at the end, if you want to know even more about CDD fees and if you could avoid them, watch the entire video on my YouTube channel, something like that. You know, so that way you started off with a story. You brought them in with you, you educated them, and you hit them with a call to action. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'll be very, very effective, especially with the way you you speak and the way that you you record outdoors. It'll work very well. Thank you. Anyone else want to give them any uh, insight or any uh, accolades at this point? You guys can congratulate him if you want. He's he's really good at this stuff. I like the humor in his video. <laughs> Yeah, he was very relaxed and he had good eye contact. Yeah. I'm a fan, Brent. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Indeed. Hey, Brent, can you can you give us a little inspiration and tell everybody you weren't that good when you first started, when you first got into uh, speaking? Uh, as a realtor? No, I mean, in general, like when you started speaking, was it in public um, right on uh, during your ministry time or did you start speaking and like, were you on a debate team? Like, how did you first get good at speaking? You know, I went to seminary uh, right out of college, and then I went into my first assignment as youth pastor, and I got to preach 
two times a month. And I, I have kept every manuscript. I always disciplined myself to write out a manuscript so I could wordsmith every sentence. And I kept those over the years. And I tell you, if you want, if you want a self-inflicted pain, uh, when I go back and read the very first sermons that I ever did, I think, boy, they were gracious that they didn't just fire me because <laughs> it was just repetitive. It was simple. It was like, uh, it was just, you know, I was a 26 year old kid trying to uh, talk to 55 year old parents about, you know, parenting and I had no kids. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. is it safe to say that you weren't as good when you first started as, as you are today with your comfort uh, level? Well, I don't know how good I am, so I, it's not for me to say, but I, I just tell you this. Were you nervous? Embarrassed. I'm embarrassed when I go back and listen to my, and read my manuscripts. Okay. All right. Uh, with that being said, I want you guys to, to know that none of us ever start perfect. And uh, I know Joelle's on the call right now. She'll give you enough stories to, to fill out the rest of this, this meeting. But I want to show you guys, because like you said, a, a show is better than a tell, right? Look at one of my first videos and how energetic I was right off the cuff, like how good I was right my one of my first videos. Good morning, everybody. The reason I'm using this video today is to speak to you guys about the importance of having goals and what goals mean and what, what they should be um, meant for. All right, who am I inspiring with that? No one wants to hear about goals from a guy who is, he's, I don't even have any energy. Uh, this is good. I sound like Eeyore from uh, Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you guys um, have to be great. Look, this video was shot in 2016. I've come a long way in six years. Wow. And look, you've got 185 views. Yeah, look, I'm famous right from this video. <laughs> this video made it for me. One thing I want to say, and I think this is very important for us all, the camera angle. If anybody has seen Beetlejuice, if you're old enough to know what Beetlejuice yeah. is, the movie, He's watching it, the yes. camera angle makes your head look too small for your body. <laughs> so everybody watch the camera angles. The camera cannot be pointed up towards you. It's yeah. either eye level or above. Correct. Good tip. Good tip. Yeah, I don't have to. I don't have to worry about that camera angle. My head's always big. So. <laughs> I know it's always bright in the sunshine. Play. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's that's funny. Funny. good. See, I, I want I want you guys to know that no one was born perfect. Nobody is going to be a uh, you know a whiz at anything when they get started speaking videos, uh, real estate, anything that you jump into. It is a long road, but if you're willing to take that journey, you're going to get better. Go ahead, Brent. If I could just say this, for you to improve that much in six years is the most helpful thing I'm going to take out of this call because, yes. um, yeah, that, that was worth everything to see the improvement of the Lewis we know now. I thought that 20 years ago when you should pop that thing up, but six years, dude, you were, you've come a long way real quick. Oh yeah. And this is a good video. Joelio will tell you about the ones that I never put out. <laughs> I, I watched some of the announcements that I sent to the office about what changes we're implementing back in 2016. I'm like, who's going to listen to me? This is like torture to listen to because wow. it wasn't me. I wasn't comfortable. Like I can speak to you back in 2016, 2015 and have a really good conversation. But if I were to turn on the camera, I was just like, oh my God, like I was so nervous. I didn't, couldn't remember anything, but you get, I used to, I used to YouTube how to talk to a camera. Like, how do you feel comfortable in front of a camera? Like, I used to research this stuff. And looking back now, I guess that's a sign of a, someone who really wants to, to learn that craft. If you're going to take the time to research how to get better at one of the most uncomfortable things in the world, you're going to learn something, you know, and it helped. I mean, I, every little piece of information that I would pick up, it would help. But uh, yeah, guys, you got to keep at it. Good, good. We got time for one more. Belinda, do I pull you up on... Um, uh, do TikTok. I pull you up on YouTube or TikTok? Where? Uh, do TikTok. TikTok, okay. And well, you're going to do it 10 months too soon. Belinda, do you target the 60 second or three minute? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, okay. Is it, is it Robert or Robertson? No, ten, uh, 10 mustard seeds. Uh, 10 mustard seeds? The, the number 10 or spelled out? Spelled out. 
I in followed all one you word. yesterday, uh, Belinda. Yes, I saw that. Thank you. Okay, so which one am I playing? The first one or the last one? Oh my God, look at this one. <laughs> this no wonder, one. No <laughs> wonder this one got You can do that one. <laughs> it got 200 views because uh, he used the filter. That's great. I like it. Yeah, he was showing me how to do Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> It makes him feel to answer these questions. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. What are you doing? Up and down, up and down. This is how it makes him feel to answer these questions. Yeah. It was um, saying people keep asking me about interest rates are up and down and up and down. And this is how it makes me feel to answer these questions. Oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> Filter, how did, how did he do that? It's, it's Snapchat, and you get a bunch of filters to change your face, or you know, a whole bunch. Brent, of stuff. I will show you. Oh, good. All right. <laughs> I know how exactly. All right. Okay. <laughs> we got a date. Yeah, TikTok has got millions of filters. Well, maybe not millions, but a lot of filters that you can use to make your face look any different way you want. Snapchat says so too. Uh, but yeah, these these are good. So now you said there was um, this one's got 200 views. I think it's because it's funny. People are watching it multiple times to understand what you're saying. And it just looks weird and gets your attention. But now let's look at one that you have that maybe doesn't have that much engagement. Like this one here. It's, it's the one below. And it's that was last Tuesday, me doing um, brokers tours. Okay, let's check this out. Happy Tuesday, it's Belinda, and today I'm going to take you with me on a broker's open. I'm going to view a few homes in the West Georgia area. Uh, these are new listings, and it's only open to brokers, real estate agents only, so that we can preview and become, and we help each other become area experts in the market. So I think these are fine homes. I think you're going to love them. So come on this tour with me. I'll see you soon. Right, so I am in Carrollton and this is our first stop on our tour. And this is a beautiful subdivision. I'm gonna turn the camera. As you see, it's a wonderful, gorgeous day. And this is the home that we'll be taking a look at. Okay, we're gonna stop here for a second because it's a long video. It's two minutes. Yeah. Uh, so let's just break it up into chunks. Uh, so far, what do you guys see that you feel like now after you've learned some things from today's uh, meeting? What can you? What can you? Well, first, let's ask Belinda. Belinda, what do you think you could improve on on this video and why maybe it's not as engaging as others? Honestly, I think it's not as engaging because I put the area tag and other videos that I did in more popular areas of Georgia. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that get the most views. Nobody cares about Carrollton. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I turned down the music. Um, there is a, a track associated with it. My right. son yeah. taught me that too, that if you don't want to hear the necessary music, sometimes you turn it all the way down, but it could be the song choice that I chose also. Yeah. The more popular songs you choose, the more you, your video algorithm. gets yeah exposed my videos, I'm never in them. I just take a video of the house and I choose a very popular song and I let it play. And that's how people get to view my videos. Oh, food too. I post a lot of food videos. Yeah. Does anyone else want to give um, Belinda any, any insight on what they're seeing? Maybe if she would talk as she walks through the house, would be more engaged, engaged you know? not to be quiet and just show pictures. Yeah, uh, I agree with, in, with TikTok. It's not as forgiving as YouTube. People on TikTok do not have attention spans like they do on, on YouTube, right? So your buildup to what you're gonna do should, should be eliminated. You should just start and just start showing. And if you wanna explain, throw some text on the screen because people just wanna see, they wanna, they wanna feel, they wanna go through the, they wanna go through the activity instead of being told about the activity and then Again, I also saw you in the video also looking at yourself on your phone. 
as opposed to looking at the audience. If you are going to look at the camera, if you are going to show your face, look at the camera. Uh, and I, I believe you you didn't know or you were trying to repurpose this content because it looks like initially the the, the content was shot uh, portrait and then you uh, landscape. I'm sorry. And then later on, you switch it to portrait because you can see the blurs on the sides. Right. So TikTok uh, likes when you use the whole screen and it's intentional. If you were recording intentionally for short form content, you could just record it the way that uh, you would record like a long picture, like portrait. Right. So if you would have recorded the video in that uh, way, it would also look a little bit better visually. But I, I will strongly and, and I don't take this the wrong way, but I strongly disagree that your tags or your or your or your song had anything to do with the video success uh, so much so that I would challenge you to remake this video with just the content of the house make it less than 30 seconds long use the same hashtags and use the same song and turn up the music on the song publish it again and let and see how many video uh, how many views you get that's your assignment for this week I want you to do that I'm not saying that I'm going to be right but this is an exper experiment for you to see is it my tags? Is it my song selection? So that way in the future, you don't have to be so um, picky or maybe um, held up on what you're writing as, as your metadata or your tags or your, the song selection. You know, it doesn't really matter because if we did this right now, I'm going to show you something. When you, when you feel like, what's wrong with my video? Why is it not getting that many views, right? Watch this. When I type in real estate and I come up with top, I'm 28 years old and I made $260,000 my first year selling real estate. And this is what I learned. I learned that selling commercial is way more profitable than selling residential. I sold five residential homes for an average of $700,000 and I made $140,000 in commission. Whereas when I sold my first piece of commercial real estate, I made $76,000. Okay. That girl has a lot of views on there and it's because it's so, it's so quick, 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 quick. And she's showing you different backgrounds every couple of seconds and she's engaging you with hooks consistently, right? So that's something you could take away from, from that video. Now let's look at a more uh, a subtle one where it show, actually shows homes. Watch this. Yeah. And uh, th this this video here, uh, it, it got a lot of views and it's um, it, he went hashtag crazy. So he used every hashtag he could fit into his description uh, and he used no description whatsoever. He used a song that cut out after 15 seconds. So it really it really doesn't have much to do with, I believe, any of those things. It really has more to do with you've got my attention. You know, you're showing me things that, oh, I'm engaged. I want to know what's next. Or I want to see what's around the corner. Right. So if you're going to do a video of showcasing a house, watch other videos that have done well where people showcase houses and see what they did and try to emulate it. You know, just try to do what they're doing, more or less, and then see what works for you. You'll find your own kind of like um, area where it's like your creation plus their influence and you'll come up with something that's unique to you. OK, uh, anyone else? Go back that? to the page for a minute. Which one? It, the one the, we just looked at? Uh, no, go back to my page. Yes, I am. OK. If you go to the video right next, the one that says 230. Uh, this one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my son put that up on Instagram Reels. Sorry, let me uh, turn That's that. okay. He put that up on, not Instagram, on Facebook Reels. And that got 1.5 thousand views already. Yep, exactly. Uh, because look how fast it's going. People want to see that. It's so yeah. quick. It's so quick. That, that's what he did. That's what my 10 year old did for me. Yeah, this is great. I'm telling you. <laughs> that's this. great. So now you've learned all you, the answers are always underneath our noses. Like if you look at your own, if you look at your own TikTok page and you look at your own uh, content you've already put out, what works, what doesn't work. Okay. So this is a case study of what doesn't work. This was a case study of what does work. And, and to be honest with you guys, sometimes or a lot of times, certain videos work better on certain platforms. So for example, let me tell you, I have a video that they got, how many views? It got 20,000 views in one day, a short form video on YouTube, but on um, TikTok, it only got a thousand views. 
and on Instagram, it only got a thousand views, but YouTube, I got 20,000. So sometimes certain content will perform better on others. And as you, and as you begin to grow as, um, as a content uh, creator in, in your, in your field, you'll see what works best for each platform and what works best for you. Um, but yeah, Belinda, that, that's why, right? What do you guys think? I, I'm doing a lot of the talking. I want you guys to tell Belinda why you feel some things are working, some things are not working. Help her out. I think you should hire your 10 year old uh, to do all your content. No, no, because right. now, yeah. nowadays kid, kids with the, you know, social media is changing so rapidly, but they pick it up so fast. And it's like, they know what, what hooks. So just hire him and, and let him take care of all your social media. Yeah. And with that money jingle, jingle thing, the <laughs> video right next to it with the white house that has 780 and the one right below it that has 815. If you do one of those videos too, real quick, and I know we're short on time, but there's a reason why I want everybody to see that. What do you guys take has, away from this one? Has anybody ever seen that or heard that music before? Mm. Yes. I okay. have it. If you haven't, that's because you're not an EXP marketplace. Oh. That is EXP. And there's several different ones that you can do. Wow. You pull up your MLS and it include and you could change out whatever pitches you want, but that's mm -hmm. all EXP, you guys. Uh, oh, okay. wow. that's all built in you just downloaded that and uploaded it yes oh, so where, did you, where did you go EX is in the marketplace we got a video creator right there mm. oh wow yeah. lewis you can pull one of mine if you want yeah let's do it <laughs> the palooza maybe the part of palooza palooza yeah okay uh or one. anyone Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let, let's pick one of your most popular ones so far. You got one with 10,000 views right here. Let's see why this one did so well. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, what did you guys take away from this? Why do you think this video did so well? The music is catchy. The music is great. Right? The home isn't over the top, right? It's not like, oh my God, this is a $10 million home. It's a, uh, the video has really good lighting too. Great lighting. Uh, just I don't know. Do you have a location tag on there? I, I didn't put one. Milltown, New Jersey. I mean, you got a hashtag, Milltown. That's it. Milltown hashtag. Yeah. I don't think you put um, a, a geolocator on it, though, right? No. Okay. With uh, Arab music, do you feel like you're getting people from inside the United States just as much uh, as, as you expected, or are you getting people from other parts of the, country, of the world as well? Um, I have a hashtag Arab Arab TikTok, so yeah. I get from all over. Okay. Yeah. So that necessarily doesn't help your 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 real estate business, but it helps you grow your your subscriber account and your influence uh, um, influencer side of business, right? Yeah, it, it has um, it had people contact me oh, for business. Yeah. Perfect. Like, what do you do for a living? Um, I want to buy a house. Nice. They ask questions. Yeah, I got two people actually. I'm working with from TikTok. That's amazing. Good for they're you. They're from New York. They're not from Jersey, actually. That's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Okay. The now, food, the food uh, TikTok gets a lot of attention. <laughs> the food TikToks? Let's see. Yeah. Where do you have one? I'm sorry. Was somebody going to add uh, or say something else about, about Sarah's uh, TikTok here? 
just constantly moving. It's engaging. You, yeah. you know that if you take your eyes off it for two seconds, three seconds, you're going to miss something. So I think that's the key that I, I learned, Brad. Just keep it moving. And and it's not a talking bobblehead. It's, it's pictures are saying everything. Yeah, exactly. I think you lose people's uh, attention when it's a little too long on one spot. So as Brent says, if you keep moving and keep the people, you know, their eyes on something, they will be listening and watching. What you did, Eva, uh, in your open house two weeks ago, uh, very good. So we don't have time probably today to see that, but you did a good job on that. I'll pull it up real quick if you guys want. It's on TikTok or on YouTube, Instagram. I don't even know. Did you did you post it anywhere, Eva? Except I did post it on the Facebook, but it's a little long. It's just you know, going yeah. through the house. I was just trying to make something, but uh, yeah, we'll check I will it work on week. something. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Good, it's good. A, it's a contrast to no words that Sarah just showed and Eva was narrating through it. Got it. Got it, guys. All right, so let's just recap on what we learned today. I want to um, just um, kind of remind you guys of some, some stuff that's very important. Telling stories or having the viewer think about what's going to happen next or what's around the corner is super important. Okay, that's the number one thing that you have to be aware of within your first three to five seconds of a video. Okay, that's number one. Uh, number two is your physiology, right? Get more comfortable, get loose, right? Go Maybe go for a walk before you shoot your video, you know, and just be comfortable. And remember, you need to make eye contact with the camera, right? I suffered with that. I only picked up on that years down the road because I'm all over the place sometimes. I'm looking everywhere, right? Because it's uncomfortable to make eye contact with a little circle that's on your phone. Remember, don't look at yourself. Look at the camera, which is kind of like, oh, yeah, that's right. We always tend to do that if you guys are Maybe you guys look back at your videos now, but remember that's very important because the other person doesn't, doesn't see what you're seeing. They see your eyes and your eyes aren't with them, then they're not paying attention. Uh, those are very important things. And remember the person that's viewing your video or to your audience is the one that's gonna determine whether that video is successful or not. not. Not the way that you're dressed, not the way that you did your hair that day, the hashtag you use, all of that stuff is, is helpful, but it's not the key. The key is what you, what you explain, such as the information that you're, you're giving out or the content you're providing, the audience is going to make the determination whether that's a good video or not. So if a video bombs and it doesn't do well or a post bombs and it doesn't do well, use that as a learning lesson, right? When we take L's in life, right? And L's just mean for to stand for learning. That's all it is. So we learn from the ones that don't do well. And then we also learn from the ones that do do well, right? And if we get a couple of ones that do, that do great, don't just sit back and be like, oh, I'm awesome now. Everything I'm going to post is going to be great. So what you need to do is kind of reverse engineer those and figure out what worked in these videos that I can kind of do and grab, grab from there and do it again, right? So don't be scared to recreate content that, that's working, okay? So if you get something that works and you're like, oh, I don't want to be so repetitive, just tweak it a little bit and just keep using it. Maybe it's maybe shooting outdoors. Maybe it's shooting with that hat that Brent likes to wear. Maybe it's the con content you're, you're covering. Whatever it is, you'll figure out what formula is the perfect formula for your for your audience and the content you're trying to create, and just double down on that. Right? Don't get scared that you're going to be too repetitive on one thing. You know, you can make a lot of money uh, talking about one thing for the rest of your life. So that's pretty much it. Anyone want, else want to add anything? Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, this was really great. Good. Yeah, I need to get out of my comfort zone. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping you guys are because look, no one here is perfect. Everybody here is such with something. Rockwell, just go to Snapchat and use some of those filters that'll help you get out your comfort zone <laughs> real quick. <laughs> yeah, that's very funny. I don't even have Snapchat. I got, I got to get my daughter uh, some help from that. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Okay, guys. Uh, anyone else want to add anything? Or good? Everyone good? All right, let's go ahead and close out with our prayer. Uh, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day and for all the blessings that we currently have in our life, Father. We thank you for this opportunity to learn from each other and from the experiences that we've all had, Father, trying to succeed in this business. We ask you to each day walk with us and allow us to become just a little bit better than we were the previous day, Father. We also pray for the health, Father, of everyone on this call and everyone who has missed this call and all the people in our families, Father, and in our circles who desperately need it. Father, not only do we need to be 
in walks with you in our professional life, but also in our spiritual life. So please make sure to be there with us, Father, even when uh, we're not feeling so good, Father. Uh, Father, we also ask you to please bring us back here in good health and in good spirits next week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Man, thanks, guys. Thank you. Take care, guys. Thank you.